Before this video starts, everything I talk about is alleged. I have to say that just in case anyone gets butt hurt and tries to sue me. For some reason, it's hard for some of these YouTubers to let go of their pride and just admit when they are in the wrong. And in today's video, I'm gonna see which YouTuber is the worst at taking accountability. Starting off with Cody Ko. Cody Ko is a YouTuber with 6 million subs on his main channel and then another 2.2 million subs on his second channel. Cody got a start on Vine back in 2013 and then moved to YouTube after Vine jumped off a cliff in 2017. People on YouTube YouTube loved Cody and his content. He was seen as, or one of YouTube's golden boys. And I say was because Cody has some recent allegations about him going around right now. Allegedly, remember I have to say allegedly, he had with a minor. Ta Tana Mon Mongo. I don't know how to say her last name. Tana was 17 while Cody at the time would have been 25. That, that's a big yikes and a, a big no, no, if you will. But it really came to light. I think Tana was doing like some show. Who's the smallest dick you've ever had sex with? Oh my god, do no one look at me, Cody Ko. <laughs> So he got out of for being a pedophile and out of for having a small Johnson. <laughs> These allegations do have another witness though, with that being Gabby Hanna, who on her own podcast said that she told Cody that Tana was 17 at the time and then he still ended up, you know, doing it. Hey man, you probably don't know. I know she like looks a little older. She's underage. Watch it. And he's like, oh my God, thank you for telling me. And then he... And that's where Cody has kind of left it. He hasn't taken accountability for anything on his part. These rumors have been going around like mainly for a month. And to this day, at least from when I'm recording this right now, he has still not said a single thing about it yet. And I feel bad for the people who work for him because he kind of put them in the middle of this just because of him just being completely silent. It really just sucks how Cody just cucked them over like that. And on top of all the other shit that he did uh editing nate here he also allegedly dated a 17 year old i guess he's just doubling down on being a freak uh editing nate out if i were to put him on the accountability scale though i would have to put him around a 9 out of 10 uh since he has said nothing and another two people who i'm going to talk about i'm doing a two-on-one deal right now chris tyson and mr beast i'm not going to go super deep in the mr beast lore we all know him and his whole entire freaking posse at this point everyone knows him and if you've been living under a rock and somehow haven't seen the absolute shit ton of things that's happening over at the mr beast house <laughs> i guess chris tyson got caught up in some trouble part of the reason why i'm having comboing both of them here like there is no no doubt in my mind that mr beast did not know that chris was like this do i personally think he was doing what chris was doing no do i think he absolutely knew uh yes i'll i'll put up the picture of him looking at like one of the freaky pictures that chris literally bought and he was looking at it like he was freaking scared and chris's apology was like really just it was a bunch of horse shit and i'm not really gonna go too deep in the chris thing just because a bunch of other people have talked about it at this point but now you know, since the ball got rolling on someone in Mr. Beast's group, people quickly moved away from Chris and then moved on to Mr. Beast and other people in the Mr. Beast group. And I know Mr. Beast did, you know, take accountability on that part of these whole bunch of issues, but that is just the beginning. <laughs> A ex-employee of Mr. Beast known as Dogpack404 over here on YouTube is coming out with some major heat. He talked about how Mr. Beast videos are fake. Uh, him promoting fake giveaways, poor work conditions, fake lotteries, a bunch of other stuff, and how there was another PDF file on the team, allegedly. That alleged would be someone named Delaware, which is actually Jake the Viking's brother-in-law. Jake the Viking defended him on Twitter, weirdly enough, but he is a registered sex offender. There's no I way Mr. Beast didn't know about that either. Unless they're so, maybe, maybe, maybe you gotta start doing like background checks over at Mr. Beast Inc. or whatever it's freaking called. And the way Dog Pack is talking about Mr. Beast makes Mr. Beast sound like he's freaking Homelander behind the scenes. What did you say? Nothing. Nothing? 
What did you say to me? He had another ex-employee, Jake Weddle. I'm sure you've seen him on the channel on part two of his series. And he talked about his poor experience for working for Mr. Beast. And he spoke personally about videos that were fake that he had to do and how a video he took part of was the first attempt at the solitary confinement video that he did. And he was somewhat tortured <laughs> for like 30 days. And I mean, that's, that's pretty messed up. And I do highly recommend go watch Dogpack's video, full video, if you haven't seen it. I mean, it, it has 10 million views, so I'm imagining you have. It seems like he's actually trying to do good and not bullshit uh, like me. But if we stack them up on the accountability scale right now, if we combine the both of them, it is at a 10 out of 10. Because Mr. Beast has not said anything after the whole Chris Tyson thing. He has been completely silent. He has posted two videos, I think. As of recording today, he is in a cave, which is nice. <laughs> I honestly don't think he's going to respond because I really don't even know how he could respond. And I just doubt it's going to happen, period. Moving on to Logan Paul. Logan has had also his fair amount of scandals in his time on the internet. The main one right now though has to easily be CryptoZoo. And if you don't know about CryptoZoo, it's Logan Paul's crypto scam. I mean, pro I mean crypto project where you, I think it was like a shitty NFT game that lost people millions of dollars. And Logan Paul got called out by CoffeeZilla, a YouTuber who actually backs his stuff up with facts. Coffee dropped the bomb that Logan hired literal known criminals and a bunch of other damning information about this whole entire project. And I think as everybody knows, Logan Paul at this point is a very rich man. He has Prime, WWE, his own YouTube channels, you know, sponsors. He has a shit ton of money. Uh, he brags that Prime is a billion dollar company all the time. And Coffee and a lot, of, a lot of other people said that just to just, you just need to pay the victims back. I don't know, like it was like maybe two, three million dollars. That's like a lot of money. But when you're Logan Paul, it's really not because you spend that on like a Pokemon card. And he's flip flopped so much with his stance on CoffeeZilla. He went from thanking him for what he said. Thank you, CoffeeZilla. Um, you have catalyzed this and I am very grateful for your work and your investigation. And I mean that. Thank you, bro and said he was gonna devise a plan and pay the victims. And then newsflash, he only did partial refunds for some <laughs> of the people. And Coffee, of course, did another video calling out Logan that he only paid back part of the money and how he took a long time to even pay back part of the money. Putting Logan Paul on the accountability scale, I will have to give this around a seven, six and a half, seven out of 10. Uh, so let's say seven because he did pay some people back and i imagine he is going to end up paying them all back it's just going to be a matter of time but i want to go into some honorable mentions that didn't quite make my main talking points and i'm going to do this i'm going to do a speed round of honorable mentions um dr disrespect uh yet another pdf file and i literally think he has said two things i don't know the full apology on twitter i think he posted a picture of him and a chessboard and the pov looked like it was a child because it looked really low down so i don't know how much of a chess move you think that was but uh eight out of ten pdf file number four of this video colleen ballinger uh best apology on youtube i have ever seen the bitch whooped out a ukulele and serenaded us with i think the worst song i have ever heard in my life 8.5 out of 10. But that's the end of the list mr beast and that whole drama i think there might be recency bias but right now it's 100 percent the worst one here because i don't think it's gonna stop i think that's gonna just keep going and keep going and keep going and i don't think he's gonna ever have a response but congrats mr beast um you succeeded in having awful employees. You may be an awful person yourself. Make a response. You probably won't. Uh, yeah. That is going to be all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day. Peace.